prophecy in motion prophecy in motion ela baba ba shatala baka prata katabala da bakaya rakata prekete le mokosia bala da da now we do not yet appear what we shall be like it do not yet appear the curriculum is still in progress but when the master is done with your life when you are tried as gold you will be an object of praise an envy for the nations rakata prekata bala da bakosia Lord, I will pass through the training. I will be built. Shake up, Maria, kata ba 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 ba. Rata prekete la ba da ba kasa la mokosia. Make sure you are you are praying. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter twelve, from verse one. The Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, it says, let us lay aside every weight. Your weight can be your looks. Your weight can be your designer suit. Your weight can be your ego and the pride and the arrogance that mediocrity has given you. Let the Lord smash it and bring you to a higher standard. Hallelujah. Listen. This has been our cry in this place. He is the pot and we are the clay. Whenever you come here, you say, Lord, stretch me. Open me up and change me. Don't just come here tonight to say, wow, let's see what happens. Especially if this is your first time participate and let your heart be open the bible says he is the rewarder of them that diligently diligently that seek him without distractions your will be done hallelujah Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The reason why success is valuable is because not everybody will ever get it. Are you listening to me? Greatness lies in the hands of those who have endured what others cannot endure. While you are praying, some people are in the beer parlor. Let me tell you something. We know about the mercy of God, but I want to tell you God is also just. Hallelujah. It is the justice of God that takes sinners to hell. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. That means if you don't reap what you are sowing, God is being mocked. Are you listening to me? God cannot be mocked whatsoever a man soweth that man will receive it he said he that soweth to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption but he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal you can choose today to pay the price and sow seeds that will the bible says and abraham was all genesis 24 and stricken in age and God had blessed him in all things. Our parents left curses for us. Many of us are victims of the carelessness of the generations that have gone ahead of us. But you must take responsibility about your life. Otherwise, things will not change. This is why God brought you here tonight. As an indication of your desire to partner with the Holy Spirit in transforming your destiny. And let me tell you something. The kingdom of God operates in a reward system. You will not seek God and later run back and seek other things. As you seek Him, they will follow you. God will be unjust if you have to seek Him first 
and then run back to catch up in bringing other things uh -uh. as you seek him those things that men follow will come to you so open your eyes will you open your ears then you understand that the Lord is here. This is what God is asking you to do tonight. Open your eyes. Open your ears. And you understand that the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Bless you. Greet one another. Tell them lectures continue. Hallelujah. Bless you. Be seated. If you don't have a seat, stand. Or sit on the floor. Hallelujah. When it was time for the people to eat bread, Jesus said, tell them to sit down. If you can't sit down, you won't eat that bread. That bread is not just for people. You must sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What wisdom is this? Tonight I'm going to be sharing with us on a dimension of wisdom that I believe will fire somebody's spirit. We've been considering the subject of success. Let me tell you something. It's my desire that the least person among us will be like David. Hallelujah. You know, as I look at everyone here, I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining. If God will open your eyes to see how your five years will be like, how your ten years, some of you are escaping some things forever. Satan notwithstanding. Look, it plays to listen to the Lord. Are you hearing me? He said, Martha, you are distracted and offended by many things. But he said one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing is needful. That you sit down at the master's feet. He said, this Mary has desired and this she has found. There is a master key in life. When you find it, you have found it. Hallelujah. What wisdom is this? I want to reveal to us, building from last week's message. Please, if you've not listened to last week's message, get it. Get it is very important. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. We've been receiving testimonies. A very thought-provoking message that opens you up to the spiritual dimension of success that lets you know that nothing just happens in this earth realm there are those who are called the elites in this earth realm those who know there are those who are the victims of the consequences and the decisions of the elite hallelujah and tonight i trust that the word of god will provoke you make sure you write Please, if you are here without a writing material, beg your neighbor. And he told John, he said, write, although he was in heaven, he said, write it. For these words are faithful and true. Write it. Hmm. A dimension of success that is bigger than science. Bigger than philosophy, bigger than common sense. I want to show you a, a, not a mystery, but I trust the Lord to equip us tonight with a higher dimension of the operation of the Spirit. See, I want you to be so full of knowledge and truth that your life, it will be programmed automatically to be successful. You can't undo it again, even if you want to do it. Hallelujah. 
in chemistry there are some reactions that are called irreversible reactions once they happen they have happened this is what is happening to your life there is an irreversible spiritual reaction hallelujah you will become something and then when you become it those who are running helter skelter will say but this is what we've always wanted to become and god will say go and join the king bishop talked of a 75 year old man who was in primary four there are some classes in life you don't jump hallelujah god designed it such that when you finish every class a batch is given to you so you can know who cheated you can do expo in the university but not in life at the end of it life will count your level and count the badge and say oh guy you jump this 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 go back many people will go back the bible says is the thief that follows through the window is that in your bible hustling can help you jump through the window is that true but life will bring you back i tell you may it not happen when you have children because they will go back to with you and as you are moving they'll be saying daddy why lamentations 327 it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth it is good that a man bear his yoke the bible says the glory of the young man is his strength now that you are young you can pray now that you are young you can press he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh when no man can walk again he said in the days of samuel when the word of the lord was cast may you be the light when darkness comes upon men and that light will make kings to come to your rising gentiles and kings to the brightness of your rising like sheba they will come with their goods to reward your sacrifices of today and sheba heard of the wisdom of solomon it was so notable she had to sail by sea and come to test him the entire kings of the earth came together solomon is the biblical portrait of wisdom i pray that this dimension of wisdom will fall upon somebody this night hallelujah thank you jesus let's write a few things what does it mean to be successful in the kingdom it's important that we understand the biblical concept of success i want to define success by god's standards because there are many standards that have been presented to many people including believers and many of us have received wrong perspectives of what we call success but we trust god for grace to reorder a lot of things say after me i receive this dimension of wisdom say one more time i receive this dimension of wisdom hmm. Grant us this wisdom, O oh God. Grant us this wisdom. I'll give you two definitions. The definition of success in the kingdom. Number one, it means to grow in the knowledge of God and in conformity to His nature and principles. The first parameter to gauge and define success in the kingdom is not a car not a house not jeep wrong parameters in jeremiah 9 23 he says that let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength hallelujah he said but let him that glory glory in this 
that he knoweth and understandeth me. The knowledge of God to the degree to which you know God and you have allowed your life to conform to his nature and his principles. You are considered to be successful from the perspective of the kingdom. So number one, growing in the knowledge of God. The Bible says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Paul was speaking to the church. He said, my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Until the nature, the character, the formation of Christ. So that you become a visible manifestation just like Jesus. The Bible says, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In other words, he was the physical expression of whatever you think God is. Hallelujah. Number two, it means to experience the blessings of God in every area of life. It's not enough to know God. It means to experience. Look at me. The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation, not the explanation of the sons of God. There are many people who can explain success, but there are very few people who will ever experience it in this life. The world is not waiting for explanations. They are waiting for the manifestation. Hallelujah. So success in the kingdom means to experience the blessings of God. In how many areas? Success is not just about money and finance. No. Your health. Your family. Your relationships. It means to experience the blessing of God. Everybody say the blessing of God. In your career, in ministry, in whatever area of your life. That your life will be an example A portrait there are certain people in scripture that represented the portrait of certain things the biblical portrait of a blessed man is Abraham the biblical portrait of wisdom is Solomon the biblical portrait of the prophetic is Elijah the biblical portrait of the law is Moses hallelujah the biblical portrait of love is John the biblical portrait of faith is Peter. And so on and so forth. May you be a portrait that represents something to the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. Kingdom definition of success. We're talking about wisdom. So I want to get it straight with us so that we know what we are not talking about tonight. Number three. It means to accomplish your life goals. And your God-given assignment. Success in the kingdom means you accomplish your life goals. You accomplish your God-given assignment. He said, my meat. In other words, this is what gives me satisfaction. To do and to finish the will of him that has sent me. He said, Lord, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Jeremiah chapter 1 he said before I formed you I knew you I called you I ordained you to be a prophet it means to accomplish your goals in life to do and finish your God given assignment one more number four It means to be a blessing to mankind. Success according to the kingdom definition means to be a blessing to mankind. Both believers and unbelievers. The Bible says he gives rain both to the godly and ungodly. When your life becomes a reference point both to believers and unbelievers you are successful. He said let your light so shine before men not christians before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father 
in heaven. The Bible says we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, that we may do that which we have been for ordained for. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Write this word down, exploits. This is our year of supernatural exploits by the grace of God. Exploits. It means unusual, uncommon, extraordinary accomplishment. Unusual, uncommon, extraordinary accomplishment. Hallelujah. Let me give you the definition of wisdom. You're ready? Number one, this is the general definition of wisdom as we know. That wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge. This is the general definition of wisdom. Wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge. When knowledge is applied or information is applied accurately, we call that wisdom. Are you there? Accurate application of knowledge. But you see, the wisdom I'm talking about tonight is not just the one that fits this definition. It's a higher realm. Mark 6. Mark 6. Let's examine this kind, this type and this dimension. Mark 6. Say after me, I received this wisdom. Are you there? Mark 6 verse 1. Let's hurry up. And he went out from there and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. He said, and many hearing him were what? astonished saying from where had this man these things he said and what wisdom is this which is given unto him and through that wisdom what happens he said that even such mighty works i'm talking about the kind of wisdom that will grant you access to command exploits beyond the realm of this earth this is not the kind of wisdom you find around the bible says jesus walked in that level of wisdom and when he began to talk they asked him they said from where where is this man coming from and what wisdom is this everybody say what wisdom is this so let's define the dimension of wisdom we are talking about this wisdom is the supernatural ability the supernatural ability to use the inspired and the written word of god to solve life's problems and make accurate decisions the supernatural ability to use the word of god both written and inspired to solve the problems of life and to make accurate decisions this is the dimension of wisdom 
that the ancients used in the Bible and they commanded exploits. The ability to use the word of God and all the inspirations that come from the Holy Spirit to give it applicable value here in the earth realm and command results with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's examine a few kinds of wisdom that we have. James 3. I want to take this carefully tonight because I want everybody to understand this. I want us to get it. The Bible took time to talk about this dimension of wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom even cries. Wondering why people are not interested in her pursuit. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. Let's look at James 3. We read from verse 13 to 17. But the verse of emphasis is verse 15. From verse 13. It says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good life his works with meekness and wisdom. Verse 14. But if he have bitter envy and strife in your heart, that means there are some levels of wisdom that only produce this. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. Are you ready? It says, This wisdom descended not from above. So we see the first kind of wisdom. This is the one we are talking about. The wisdom that comes from above. Hallelujah. The apostle is contracting, is, is contrasting a wisdom that comes from above with other kinds of wisdom. Number one, the wisdom that comes from above. This one is given by God alone. You don't read for it. You can't search it out. Let's continue. Number two, he said, but it's earthly. So we have earthly wisdom, human wisdom, what we call common sense. The ability to know that if you touch fire, it will burn you. The ability to know that you cannot sit down on water ordinarily. Earthly wisdom, Sophia. Hallelujah. Number three, sensual wisdom. This is the wisdom that you get through study, scientific wisdom, philosophical wisdom. Hmm. Wisdom that comes through studies. Hallelujah. That's the kind of wisdom that makes all of the things that we have that help us relate with our environment. And then the fourth kind of wisdom. The Bible calls it devilish or demonical wisdom. This is the wisdom that is gotten from the underworld. This is the wisdom that you get by your alliance and your allegiance with Satan. This is the wisdom that was used to build Egypt a type of Babylon it was the wisdom that Pharaoh and the Egyptians used and they accomplished supernatural extraordinary things but hear what the Bible says verse 17 this is the wisdom we are considering tonight he said but the wisdom that is from above come on now where is it from it's not from the earth realm I will show you that you cannot find it. It does not have a physical location in the earth realm. It's first pure, peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. This is the wisdom we are talking about. This dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten in this earth realm. Wisdom from above. Above and beyond anything that you know. Everybody say, I receive that wisdom. 
Hallelujah. There is this dimension of wisdom. And there are men and women who are walking in this level of wisdom today. Solomon in scripture. The Bible says that Solomon had an interaction with God and he was given this wisdom. And the reign of Israel during the dispensation of Solomon as theologians tell us is the closest to the biblical portrait of what the millennial reign looks like. There was no war. Hallelujah. Solomon became king and he brought rest and abundance to the nation of Israel. No war during his time. There was peace and tranquility by this wisdom. And tonight I pray that we will find it. We will find it. So that you and some of your family members will rest forever. I pray for you that you will find it. There are some things that when you find they become life. They exempt you forever. Hallelujah. Job 28. How do we access this wisdom? This supernatural ability that is not just found lying around. This wisdom that defies scientific wisdom. Wisdom that is bigger than studies. Wisdom that is bigger than age. Age does not give this kind of wisdom. This is the wisdom that when they gathered around with Job, many people were speaking out of different wisdom. Earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom. And Eli who said, uh-uh. He said, I was young and you people were old. So I thought to keep quiet. He said, I thought that experience should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man. Any kind of man. Hallelujah. Solomon was a very young boy when he began to lead the nation of Israel. 12 years of age. But he became a king with this mighty wisdom. And he ruled for 40 years. 12 years. How old are you? Those who celebrated their birthdays, how old are you? But a 12 year old boy confused and perplexed you see why he asked god for wisdom what will you expect a 12 year old boy to ask wife husband he said oh lord i'm but a small boy and god said don't worry there is a kind of wisdom that when it comes upon you you will produce exploits for 40 years hallelujah job 28 for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. It's a long reading let me read this is job the bible calls job the richest blessed blessed man in the east he was a great man when the elders saw him they stood up the young men saw him and they bowed their face they could not look at him what dimension of wisdom brought him to that level of success read with me 28 surely there is a vein for silver that means where silver is mine has been found by men is that true and a place for gold where they refine it iron is taken out of the earth and bronze is smelted out of stone he set it an end to darkness and searched out all perfection the stones of darkness and the shadows of death listen Verse 6, he said the stones of it are the place of sapphires. And it had the dust of gold. He's trying to tell you what the wisdom, the philosophical wisdom of men have been able to accomplish. He said through that wisdom, they have even been able to find where gold and silver is hidden. They can come here and not need to dig down to the earth to tell you whether there is gold or silver. 
That's a measure of wisdom. Hallelujah. But verse 7 says, There is a part which no fowl knoweth. Birds fly in the air. They see things that men cannot see. But he said there is a part that even the eyes of the bird cannot reach. No matter what plane it stands to search it out, it cannot see it. He said, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The lion's whelps, the lion that does not fear any animal, it is not restricted. But he said, even the lion has not been able to discern that place. He put forth his hand upon a rock and overturned the mountain by its roots. He cut out rivers among the rock and his eyes see every precious thing. He binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden bringeth forth it to light. Verse 12, are you there? Here is the question. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? This is a question. With all the excavations that happen, there are cranes today that build all kinds of towers in the earth. Man has been able to stretch and explore wisdom. There are houses that have been built inside the sea. There are bridges that they build across seas. But the Bible says, where is this very wisdom? That with all the advancement of science, men have not found it. Let's fast for the location of this wisdom. 13. He said, man knoweth not its price. Neither is it found where? In the land of the living. In other words, it is not in this earth realm. You cannot find it here. No matter how intelligent you are, this is the wisdom that is above and beyond this earth realm. The depth. Where is the depth? The deep places. The places of the occult. The places where they do all kinds of things. That even the occultic realm has this to say. It is not with me. And the sea said it is not with me. That's why even wealthy people in the earth realm have not been able to find this wisdom. And the recession that is coming will prove it. That although the, the sea represents the abundance of people. Because the Bible says I will give you the abundance of the sea. He said even the sea, those who have walked in abundance. Who claim they have found the wisdom. All of the people that Forbes magazine is listing. The Bible says they have not found it. And time will show that what they had was not wisdom. There was famine in Samaria to an extent that people did not have any resource. They finished eating animals. They ate plants and grasses. It was remaining only human beings. And mother said, let's start eating our children. Where were the philosophers and the, the intelligent people? There will be a replay of that. Yeah. The Bible says it in Malachi 4. That the earth will burn with an oven. And all those who do wickedly will be embarrassed. Let me tell you the truth. If you do not access this wisdom, whatever else you have are just shadows. Are you getting blessed tonight? The Bible says, 15, it cannot be gotten for gold. That means you don't buy this wisdom with money. If you could buy it with money, the wicked wealthy men, including the Illuminati, they will buy everything and be the custodians of it. But the Bible says this one, even gold, cannot buy it. You can't buy it. It's not the personal possession of any man. It cannot be weighed for silver. It is not valued with the gold of Ophir and the precious onyx and the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And the exchange of it is not for the jewels of gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearl or the price of wisdom is above rubies. It says the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. 20. Whence then cometh wisdom? Where is this wisdom? That everything that men value today.
cannot buy it. This is what Solomon saw. And when he caught it, every other thing that could not buy it followed him. Come on now. I give you a master key. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Listen to the word of God when he speaks. Because they are life to those who find them. Many people will not listen. This is the problem, pastor. It's not just the hearers. There are some of you looking at me and you are saying, is this thing really important? It will be important when all else fail in your life. My son, the Bible says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. I show you a way, a way of escape out of the nonsense that many people live forever there are people perpetually forever there are some who have enslaved their generations forever one of it is america 17 trillion us dollars in debt increasing by an average of 12 billion dollars every day how many generations will pay it they are the ones we call the wise they are the ones who are trying to follow the bible says they can't buy this wisdom Are you hearing me? With all the wisdom of the military and the wisdom of governments, they've not been able to stop war. But a 12-year-old boy came with this wisdom and for 40 years, there was peace in the nation. Where is this wisdom? My God, I pray that somebody will get this wisdom. Solomon with this wisdom made silver like the dust. Silver like the dust if you find silver outside you are traveling to Kano first thing tomorrow morning to go and sell it first thing but a time came people saw it and they just left it my god i received that dimension of wisdom i receive it let's finish up seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air abaddon the place of the dead and death say we have heard its fame with our ears god understands his way this is the secret he said with all this confusion that men are having god is saying i know where it is i know where it is because i kept it And I know the place of it. Where is this wisdom? How can you access this wisdom? With this wisdom, Daniel entered a strange land. And he ruled through the dispensation of three different kings. The same result. The same result. Through the dispensation of three different kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This dimension of wisdom. We are talking about accessing this wisdom now. This dimension of wisdom only comes from God. The first thing I want you to know about this wisdom. In, an, in accessing it is that it is given. Everybody say it is given. God gives men. You don't study it. You don't look for it. It's a waste of time. God gives men hallelujah when you meet his conditions he will give it to you god gives men ready let me write the conditions for you the conditions for accessing this dimension of wisdom number one you must have a passionate love for god and his agenda the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it come into the heart of man what god has prepared for them that love him not them that speak in tongues not them that attend koinonia eye has not seen ear has not heard what god has in store for who them that love him we are going to examine solomon's life very quickly before we pray because he's the biblical portrait let me teach you something every time you are searching out for something in life stop confusing yourself 
go back to the word and look for those who were biblical portraits of that thing you are looking for the bible says look to abraham your father and to sarah that birdie he said i called him alone and i blessed him that means as far as god is concerned when you are talking about blessings and prosperity abraham is god's portrait of a blessed man not bill gates not warren buffett not carlos limas hilo not all of those great men thank god for them but he said look to abraham your father and to sarah that birdie when it comes to wisdom it was given to solomon there are many people that operated that dimension of wisdom daniel different people but we are going to examine the life of solomon let's look at his life quickly conditions for 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 accessing that wisdom number one passionate love for god first kings chapter three I prayed my heart out and I said, Lord, let your people find wisdom. May they find wisdom. Many of you will thank God for these teachings years to come. Are you there? First Kings 3. Let's examine the life of this biblical figure that was able to access this level of wisdom. The first thing the Bible has to say about Solomon in chapter 3 verse 3 is that and Solomon loved the Lord. Everybody say Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon did what? The Bible didn't say and Solomon served the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. See, let me tell you, your love and passion for God is the number one thing he's searching for even beyond your service. There are many people who serve God, but they do not love God. They don't have that passionate love. They are only serving God because of formality or because of their environment. You are in a family where everybody is a Christian. So you have to go to church. You have to come for koinonia. He said, and Solomon did what? Love the Lord. That means every other thing that he did was because of that love. A man can serve God because of wife. I hope you know that. A man can serve God because of husband. A man can serve God because of the whiplash of employment. And you just find the nearest church and say, Ah, let me find refuge in this place. And rest before I find out what is going on. People can serve God for various reasons. For car, for house, for prosperity, for job. He said, but Solomon loved the Lord. Do you love the Lord? The first condition for accessing this wisdom. This is why the kings of the earth cannot get it. Because they do not love the Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart. See, when you give God your heart not your hands not your tears when you give God your heart I'm giving you a big secret many Nigerians do not love God many pastors do not love God they love ministry they love suits they want ministry advancement but they do not love the Lord many leaders in this country do not love the Lord many young people hustlers who keep hustling forever they don't love the lord many fathers many mothers do not love the lord and we wonder why his blessings and his wisdom is far from us some of you here looking at me don't love the lord you love the house of god you love the people of god you love christian music but you don't love the lord and solomon loved the lord and solomon loved the lord can that be your testimony that will say ah and eben loved the lord and paul maman loved the lord some of you as you say and you love the lord your spirit will tell you no way you say and you are now willing to love the lord not that you love the lord 
I keep emphasizing this passion for God because if you are not rooted in love, success will make you run away from God. Are you hearing me? Success will make you do what? Let me tell you, if you enter real success, it's a double-edged sword. It can kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are levels. The, the problem is, many people in Nigeria are so poor and unsuccessful, it cannot even cross their mind what true success looks like. And Solomon loved the Lord. That's the first condition. Number two, you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing. You want to access this wisdom? You must have what? A sincere desire to be a blessing. Same first Kings 3 from verse 8 and 9. God gave Solomon an open check. He says, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? Look up. If Solomon was a Nigerian and God says, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? His first question will be, is he only me? Will there be any other person with it? Say, no, only you. He say, ha, God, you better carry paper and viral. Let me empty my whole life. Let me tell you what I want. The first thing is, any day anybody speaks against me, let him die. One. Two. All the people that have called me a failure, prove a point to them. Is that not true? Number three make those people serve me so that forever it will remind them let me tell you hear me if that is your desire i assure you it is not god's wisdom you will ever get in life you can get any other thing but you can't get god's wisdom that way the bible says indeed genesis 12 verse 2 shall all the families of the earth be blessed there are many people who, who, who jump in church. Oh, I'm a millionaire. I tell them, you can get it by, by working for 50 years. But I assure you, if it is through the wisdom of God, your heart must be ready to be a blessing. Otherwise, you cannot access this wisdom. Do you know how many self-centered, selfish people we have in this world? Some of you are saying, me, I'm not selfish. How much have you held that you know whether you are selfish or not? Solomon had the opportunity to say, Lord, me and my wife and all the people, bless me. Hear what he said, verse 8. He said, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people. People, people. When you love God truly, you will love people many pastors preach day and night to congregations they don't love they are just trying to use the congregations to show they are making progress in ministry i told god if you never bless me in this life if i never become successful in this life i may do many things but not loving you is not one of them he has my heart believe me I've crossed a bridge and burnt it that I'll never return again. When you see God blessing certain people, check their heart. I had Bishop Oyedeko shout this thing. He said, you want to know the secret of my blessing and the blessing of this ministry. Check my heart beat for God. There are many of you, if God says, between 12 this night and 1, anything you pray anything you ask me i will give you i mean jesus appears to you the first thing is you wipe sleep from your eyes and stand and mention the name of all your loved ones and mention everything till five minutes to one you will sit down and say lord i'm still thinking okay i remember do this for me for me for me i trust god that in the years to come in koinonia our testimony will not just be god gave me tea god gave me bread god gave me handkerchief but that god used me to do this for somebody else it is at that point we will clap right now we are clapping for god change me and we thank you for it god did this a millionaire is not one who has one million a millionaire is one who has become a blessing to people with up to one million 
oh god i want this i want fame i want power give me this church oh god i'm tired of wearing suit that tailor sold i want to wear the wonders i'm buying them oh god change my story and god is saying for you or for me or for my kingdom and god said well, this when we get to that bridge have you had people say that to you say when we get there we'll cross it you better god can see your heart everybody say i love the lord and i desire to be a blessing see can i tell you if you are looking for success for yourself you don't need much effort you know but you know that how many clothes can you wear how many books can you write but when your heart is set for the kingdom of god then you are you are not ready for the avalanche of exploits that you will do there are many people who want anointing some people come to me they just say oh man of god these are Buddha people again they come oh man of god my ministry we've not been experiencing the hand of god and i i trust god for the oil on your life as if i'm selling it say man of god i believe if you touch me there will be an explosion and i'm saying look at this guy from the way he's talking from the way he's talking this guy is going to yoke and kill the sheep There are many people who want to go on air oh god take me on air god say you for because of the way i love you you won't cross this realm of ministry when you see god not blessing some people don't be too quick to beg on their behalf ask god why first some of our fathers have prayed we have done bible studies we brought prophet priest king we brought everybody to our houses change our story oh god say amen god said no way you are the one shouting amen there. I have seen your heart. Are you ready to be a blessing? I'm telling you a secret. It does not cause God to change your family or your situation. But can he have your heart? Are you ready to truly be a blessing? Can you sit down today and see a family come and they love God? And you just look and the Lord say, build a, build a three bedroom flat for them. And don't announce it build it put everything and come and tell them this was why god blessed me you say if i do this to you here's the condition it must be on newspaper it must be on cnn all of you must come and kneel down and say thank you and i will give you the key in front of everybody that way they will now know that i'm serving the lord it doesn't work that way how many of you are ready to be blessed how many of you know that if, if you are successful today you will give scholarships you will build orphanages you will build churches let me tell you the truth many of you are lying because you've never done anything with the ten thousand you have even your tight you have not been faithful you just saw one thousand hey! one thousand can buy palm oil he can buy salt magi one tier gary if he's the half one said it will number three so number one a passion for god and his agenda number two a sincere desire to be a blessing say i'm a blessing, I'm a blessing. say i refuse to be a consumer say it i refuse to be a consumer i'm not that man praying for god to bless others have you had that kind of nonsense satanic anti god's agenda prayer where they say may god bless you oh as you bless please our pocket is open drop it for us what kind of cause is that there are people in life who are waiting that's that's their prayer oh god bless this guy he has already gone far just finish with him for my sake because we hate paying the price say god please the way the way tokumbo is going now lord i thank you keep blessing him i say tk i'm praying for you i'm praying for you the prayer i would have done for myself i'm doing for you don't forget me no no you must desire to be a blessing because you see how can you pay so much price just to bless others does it look fair it's not it's not the attitude of natural men when you suffer alone what happens you chop alone that's what they've taught us in nigeria pastor 
they say, I'm dying alone. Hallelujah. That's the language of Nigerians. I suffered alone. Were you there when I was suffering? Say, no. So now it's my turn to chop. I don't know you. I don't know your name. We have never met. Say, Fatima, say, Fatima, me, I don't know you. I've never seen you. If your heart is not said to be a blessing, I am telling you, I'm not just talking of money. You will never really get anything. Hallelujah. A sincere desire to be a blessing. Number three, to access this wisdom, you need to operate the law of giving. First Kings 3 verse 4. That's what we see in the life of Solomon. Everybody say the law of giving. Any day I talk about the law of giving, don't be confused. Let me tell you straight to the point what I'm talking about. The law of giving is number one, your tithe. Whenever I talk of the law of giving, it's not some unambiguous thing. Number one, your tithe. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 20 to 12. Let me tell you something. I don't care any other giving you give. Even if you give one billion for any project, if your tithe does not precede your giving life, you only wasted your time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your tithe is your number one obligation in the law of giving. Please listen to me. I pray that God will make many of you see that this is not some scheme by men of God to collect money from you. Because if that is it, you, you will never be successful. This is not about money. It's about maintaining an open heavens. The Bible says, bring ye all your tithe into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here which saith the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young. And he says, you will be a delight some land and you will be blessed. Seven prophetic blessings that follow a tithe. Many people think tithe is all about money. Tithe is about giving God first place in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, how much it's just five thousand even god understands or oh, my father gave his tithe for me all these flimsy excuses will keep you a failure in life say i receive grace to tithe be consistent i have envelopes envelopes in my house anything that comes in i've told you this is the secret of the blessings of eni it's not a mystery The finance department are on perpetual instruction. I don't care money for what is raised in this place. Before we touch one naira or one dollar or one pound, one whatever it is, the tithe is taken first. When we started the school of ministry, the same thing. The tithe, as I speak to you right now, the tithe for the collection of this night is already set. There were many trees in the Garden of Eden. But God kept the tithe and told man, don't touch it. Every time you take what God did not give you, he will return back with something. He will collect some, something that he had given you. Say amen. Every time, some of you, you take the tithe. What happens? He will drive you out of the garden. Hallelujah. Could this be the reason why some of you may never go far in life? You take 10,000. You say, Lord, in my heart I've given you. But right now, let me just use this quickly. Let me just buy Panadol. I promise you. There's 120,000 coming on Wednesday. When it comes, I will add it. These are gimmicks by Satan to kill you. Some of you, you, you in your mind, you even have it in a pen. Your tithe from March to now that you plan to give God. But you have not yet given. You say, God, you look at the heart. Number two, your kingdom investments. I'm talking of your offerings. I'm talking of your seeds that are sown in the house of God. If you have a business tight, you have a church tight, you have anything tight, tight. 
and you and open heavens so your kingdom investments and then giving to god servants prophet offerings and giving to the needy these are the things that constitute the law of giving the bible says in first kings 3 verse 4 it says solomon offered a thousand everyone say one thousand bond offerings say one thousand look up we are not up to one thousand in this place do you know what it means to see a field as big as football field and you just stand from somewhere and see them dragging animals 800 801 802 870 900 950 991 to 1000 and then they caught all of them you just see blood spilling around what waste what waste and god saw a man doing this while solomon got to the 900 one he said lord still for you he got to 991 he said lord for you and he killed the 1000 and god said no way god himself had to come down and say solomon you have touched me you have touched me in what do you want come on now there are some sacrifices that will compel the presence of god hallelujah in my little life i've had the opportunity to do some dangerous givings i've told you god does not love a cheerful giver alone god also loves a crying giver there is he that weepeth and bearing precious seeds there is he that weepeth there are some givings that you don't just give laughing you will give and cry you will give and call yourself a fool after the service how be it your faithfulness will endure finally under accessing this wisdom ask of the lord first kings 3 verse 9 solomon asks of the lord solomon asks of the lord for an understanding heart james 1 verse 5 the bible says does any man lack wisdom let him ask of the lord let him ask of the lord tonight we are going to be asking i told you this wisdom see this wisdom comes to you from god it's an impartation solomon discusses with god in the night in a dream the next day he wakes up and he starts judging with that wisdom immediately immediately daniel daniel i'm going, we're going to consider that scripture quickly before we pray daniel when the king had a dream could not interpret it he said let's just rest he rested that night that wisdom worked this is not the kind of wisdom that will happen over time uh -uh. when it comes on you it speaks at once hallelujah finally before we pray let's consider the workings of this dimension of wisdom the operation how does it work i've told you what it is i've told you how to access it shiva kapra takete balada bakasi how does this wisdom work proverbs 18 verse 1 the first way is the sacrifice of meditation this is how this this is the first way this wisdom begins to find expression what did i say the sacrifice of meditation proverbs 18 verse 1 the bible says true desire a man having separated himself seek it and intermeddle it with all wisdom meditation meditation many of us do not understand the power of meditation when you set aside time and you sit alone and you begin to allow the holy spirit to find expression and then that wisdom begins to find expression meditation Daniel chapter 2 from verse 14 to 6 please let's look at it quickly I want to show you a very sound warning and impart wisdom for some of us Daniel 2 I cried for many years to the Lord I said Lord give me wisdom give me wisdom
Daniel 2 from verse 14. Are you there? Say amen. Let's read it quickly. Verse 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. They could not interpret the king's dream. Look at this wicked king. You had your dream and you forgot and you were angry. Just like many people in Nigeria, they blame people for their failed dreams. They wanted to be great, it didn't happen. And now they are angry at everybody. Listen, Daniel said this in verse 15. And he answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. 16. Listen. He said, Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he should give him, that he should give him. This is what has killed a lot of people in our generation. We are in a rush for everything. That's why the spirit of wisdom, the touch of wisdom is not upon our lives. We are in a hurry to make money. A hurry to do everything. A hurry to get that job. A hurry to do everything in life. And so we don't consult with God. We don't pray. We don't have time to meditate. To allow the wisdom of God to edit our lives. The Bible says many are the counsel that are in a man's heart. However, it says many are the purposes in a man's heart. However, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. We never do anything as in, in a minister. Let me tell you something anybody that comes to meet you with anything in life in a rush run away quickly did you hear me run away quickly daniel said uh -uh. king you are rushing this thing too much he said give me time if you give me time i will meditate and the lord will reveal to me and i will tell you let me show you another scripture we'll soon get up and pray are you there? Zupa kata paria kata basambra dikata. Verse nineteen. He said, "Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, when he he had time, and he went in the night, meditating upon this thing, and during the night time, not the night moment." the night time this thing was revealed to him every time you take time see there is nothing that should compel your excessive hurrying in life because your hurrying in life will produce casualties that when you get to that place it will halt you and those who have been walking slowly will come and pass you you see somebody running and is running on 200 and somebody is running on 120 the next thing they are bringing the mirror out of the bush and the man is sitting on the blood on the ground with blood and somebody who was going on 120 will come and pass and say sorry what was the rush for especially for some of us who are men make sure you think through don't make stupid decisions no matter how much you think you know the answer there is a way that cement right onto a man but see great leaders are not men of hasty decisions they think through no matter what the urgency is learn this is a big secret in life daniel said tell the king to give us time and this wisdom will work hallelujah the sacrifice of meditation everybody say i receive grace to meditate some of the things you see today are the things that we get by meditation this is how i get the messages for the week i spend time i pray and i just sit in his presence and allow this wisdom that cannot be found in the land of men when that wisdom comes you know accurately what it is that god wants you to do hallelujah number two this wisdom manifests when you begin to speak or make decisions is supernatural is supernatural 
it's not wisdom that is rehearsed all of you some of please look at me look at me let me show you that some of you have already been working in this thing how many of you have had someone come to counsel you i mean somebody come for you to counsel the person and you know that you are not married yet you are talking to couples about something there is no way you would have known you did rehearse it you did rehearse what to tell them this is that wisdom it's like you are prophesying somebody will ask you a question and you begin to speak you are talking and for hours at the end of it you wish you recorded your message because you know you can't find it again this is that dimension of wisdom are you listening to me somebody say i received that wisdom luke 21 verse 15 if you can project it using the amplified version but let's just look at it luke 21 quickly somebody will access this wisdom tonight in the name of jesus somebody will access this wisdom tonight in the mighty name of jesus luke 21 verse 15 he said for i will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to resist nor gain say listen listen this wisdom begins to manifest when you are speaking it's not something that you have that you say i have it I can. no the moment you open your mouth you will begin to utter things that are not of this realm hallelujah and so you go to your office and they are deliberating on a decision and many people are just bringing foolish theories that are not applicable and you keep quiet like anywho suddenly you will open your mouth he said open your mouth and i will feel it he didn't say i'll open your mouth when i feel it open your mouth and i will feel it suddenly you begin to communicate wisdom and they look at you my father calls me a young man with gray hair ah there is a dimension of wisdom that when you speak people will look at you and say no this cannot be wisdom that is accumulated by experience this is an impartation of this dimension of wisdom i pray in the name of the lord jesus that from today as you open your mouth to speak you will speak that order and that operation of wisdom many of you have used your mouth to close the doors of your destiny because what came out was foolishness not wisdom or what came out was just scientific knowledge i pray for someone tonight i pray for someone tonight may god make that when you meet your destiny helper the right words that will be upon your lips that will compel men there are many people today moving around with business proposals and they know what books say they should say but the bible says i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece could this be what you need to tell your project supervisor for him to let you go with your work could this be that this is what you need to tell somebody to help you with capital for your business could it be that this is what you need to tell somebody to employ your loved ones let the opening of our lips utter wisdom that is beyond this realm so that you will be noted for that wisdom matthew chapter 10 verse 19 to 20 we're running matthew chapter 10 i feel the power of god in this place we're going to pray this this wisdom must hit somebody this night this wisdom must hit somebody this night someone must write it in your jota that on this day you encounter the dimension of wisdom that cannot be found in the land of the living verse 19 matthew 10 verse 19 but when they deliver you up that means when you are in trouble he said do not be anxious how or what you shall speak for it shall be given you in the same hour he says shall be given to you when that means when you stand even if you don't know what to say some of you when they invite you to preach you are shaking you are saying oh god what will i say hold on 
hold that mic now with that spirit of wisdom and you will be amazed at the utterances that will come out of your lips verse 20 he said for it is not you that speak but the spirit of your father that does what speaks in you so although you have seen a man what is really happening is the spirit of god speaking through a man that's why you weigh the man and weigh the wisdom that is coming and say what wisdom is this i pray that in years to come this will be the testimony that they will produce a documentary on some of you and name it what wisdom is this you will do things that defy the wisdom of men that the world will celebrate you for it solomon operated in this dimension of wisdom there were two women who came two harlots one slept on a child and by that wisdom he deciphered accurately and the bible says his fame was spread abroad there is a level of wisdom that will ripple across territories people will share it let me tell you something people have mouths that can talk they can as well talk about your wisdom and say when it comes to brother so and so no this is a this this guy operates in a class of wisdom that is not known to men doth not wisdom cry doth not wisdom cry look at how solomon cried with this thing in the book of proverbs solomon said wisdom is begging people wisdom stands on the street and see many people looking for success doth not wisdom cry wisdom was crying and said pay attention to me with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches but people will not listen the third way this wisdom manifests is through innovative and inspired ideas inspired thoughts job 32 verse 8 but there is a spirit in man and that spirit can bring inspiration everybody say inspiration that dimension of wisdom how did they build the tabernacle in the wilderness look at me they were in the wilderness there was no source of help but they got wisdom from god and they built the tabernacle in the wilderness brothers and sisters i can kneel down and beg you tonight do not trivialize the power of what i'm telling you there are some messages until you get to certain realms it may not be useful but when you get to that realms you can never be a leader without this you will waste your time there are many frustrated men of god who have power but don't have wisdom it takes wisdom it takes wisdom to be a leader it takes wisdom to be a father it doesn't take age it takes wisdom it takes wisdom to command prosperity it doesn't take years of time it takes this wisdom lastly dreams and visions daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23 the bible says and the secret of the lord that secret was revealed to daniel in the vision of the night how many times have i laid down to sleep and in the visions of the night god opens things to me that cannot be found in this realm that's how some of these messages come see can i tell you something some of these great men like john moen and the rest the reason why some of their songs are timeless is because they came by this wisdom it is this wisdom that transported it there are others whose songs just came from musical argument so it will change as time changes but there are others it comes with a spirit the wisdom of God comes from the realm of eternity. That's why some of these messages are timeless. Even after 30 years, they will still be relevant. 
because they come by the wisdom of God there are some messages that have gone extinct as the church of God is growing they pass them and throw them away but there are certain fathers of faith who have gone to be with the Lord but their messages are timeless because they were a byproduct of this wisdom get wisdom get understanding he said exalt and she shall promote you Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 it says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us so he spake to us in sundry times and in diverse manners communicates his wisdom to us an idea that people will be dying for in the night see do you know that Solomon received his wisdom in a dream if he had a roommate the roommate will never know that something has happened you just wake up in the morning come on now not the same person who slept i pray that someone will sleep in the night as an ordinary person and wake up in the morning with an order of wisdom i cried to god yes in my life i said lord i want you to give me this wisdom this message i'm preaching to you tonight is an old message it's an old message i'm preaching to you my experience i found this thing and i said come on lord a 12 year old boy lord i'm available give me wisdom that is bigger than my level in life give me wisdom that is bigger than my experience give me wisdom that is bigger than everything i know that wisdom will take you to a place where everybody around you is an elder except you yet they will give you a seat among the great there are some of you this wisdom will make if you ever see your colleagues it's just because you want to discuss with them but as far as success is concerned uh -uh, it will take you to a realm everybody is far older than you they'll say how did you come this fast it takes men years to do this exploits by this dimension of wisdom through wisdom is any house built through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom there are times I'm meditating nobody distracts me because at that time the spirit of wisdom comes into my room and begins to bring illumination witty ideas inventions on common solutions that are not known to men hear me many of you will have it may not speak now because of the time component of life but wait until he starts speaking see there are some of you i tell you the truth zaria is too small for you everybody is watching you but you know that what is inside you is bigger than zaria is bigger than nigeria that young man called zuckerberg before facebook went far there were people who wanted to buy it before the idea became global and they wanted to buy it for eight billion he had not even become a millionaire then he was just they wanted to price his idea he said no i know this thing will shake the world eight billion is too small at that level see i tell you the truth in my mind i've left zaria in my mind i'm out of this country there are some of you the bible says there are some people this earth was not worthy of this earth was not worthy of you are seated in the crowd some of you as you are looking at me like this that's how one day you will sit down wisdom will give you a seat there are no vacant seats only the one wisdom creates the seats in Nigeria have finished but wisdom can make room it can give you a seat I bring you a message stop wasting your life and wasting your time galloping in confusion you can walk circumspectly no matter what the price is pay it with wisdom and you will know you are paying it for the last time hallelujah rise up on your feet let us give our generation what our fathers did not give for the next five minutes we are going to cry I want you to take it serious you're going to cry your heart 
the bible says let him ask of god i have seen this in my life in a measure i can tell you there is something called the spirit of wisdom you will shock men lift your voice and begin to cry wisdom is the principal thing wisdom is the principal thing wisdom is the principal thing thank god for your degree but get wisdom thank god for phd but get wisdom thank god for books but get wisdom that divine ability to take the word of God and translate it come on pray sister pray my brother pray for the sake of your generation pray it say Lord I always knew I'm not ordinary come on pray like a warrior pray like a champion pray like a destiny shaker you will do terrible things in righteousness you will do terrible things the wisdom of God the wisdom of God you will shock men you will shock men in business you will surprise people in entrepreneurship you will bring for things that have never been done before in your career you will excel through wisdom in your academics wisdom will give you a place that your age cannot give you wisdom will take you beyond your geographical limitation going to pray right now and say Lord I receive a baptism of love for you and grace to bless your people lift your voice and pray a baptism of love a baptism of love beyond church beyond church beyond prayer meetings a baptism of love with a fresh passion, a fresh passion, a fresh passion, a fresh passion. Hallelujah! 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 Next prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, this night, kill greed 
and self-centeredness from my life forever lift your voice and pray lord kill it greed self-centeredness take it away from my life that mentality of i me and myself that mindset you are just thinking of yourself no you will never access wisdom that knows Go break it again. I kill self-centeredness in the name of Jesus. I consider others better than myself. The spirit of pain departs from God's people. This Nigerian mentality of greed, this Nigerian mentality of self-centeredness, be gone from us. We are the blessed ones, empowered to bless mankind. Empowered to bless mankind. Fire is burning in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I will read this and we'll take the last prayer point. I tell you, this wisdom is hitting somebody in this place. I know it. Some of you will write it from this night. Listen to me. Proverbs 18. I will read it. Oh my God. Some of you, your, your family will thank you on their knees. They will thank you. They will thank you. You may look like you are nothing. I don't care how your past has been. God specializes in using the things that people think. Some of you have failed so much in life. You don't ever think you can make it. I tell you, take advantage of this wisdom. And see how you will be in command of life. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me just read this quickly. Listen. Proverbs 18. This is wisdom speaking. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding standard up standard understanding put forth her voice listen she stands at the top of high places by the way of the places of parts listen she cries at the gates and at the entry of the city at the entrance of the doors unto you O men I call this is wisdom crying calling for attention Calling businessmen for attention. Calling entrepreneurs for attention. Calling ministers for attention. Calling family people. Wisdom is begging and saying you have paid attention to other things. Can you not give me your attention? There is a baptism going on in this place this night. He said, all oh, is simple understand wisdom and ye fools be of understanding heart hear for i speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things he said all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing crooked wisdom that will take you above tricks and pranks receive my instruction verse 10 and not silver stop chasing money stop chasing money stop hustling you will waste your time even if you get it it will not be sustained it will give you high blood pressure it will give you stroke wisdom will give you success with rest listen 11 for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her he said i wisdom i dwell with prudence and i find out knowledge of witty inventions verse 14 
we'll just read 14 to 16 and we'll stop listen it says counsel is mine there is no foolishness when you walk with me sound wisdom he said i am understanding and i have strength verse 15 by me kings reign kings don't reign by election are you hearing me by me kings reign this is wisdom telling you the things it has done by me kings reign and nobles and even the judges and princes decree justice by me princes rule and the nobles and all the judges of the earth listen 17 i love those who love me and those who seek me early shall find me those who seek me early those who seek me early hear this verse 18 final verse riches that men die for riches that men die for he said they are with me they are not in Aso rock they are not in london they are not in any bank i tell you they are with me riches and honor are with me yeah durable riches long lasting riches and righteousness we are going to pray final prayer point you are going to say lord let this wisdom fall on me many of you as you pray this prayer i tell you the wisdom of god will hit you some of you will sleep this night you will wake up with visions lift your voice and begin to pray let it fall oh god let it fall oh god wisdom from above make leaders with wisdom let it fall wisdom that will shock the world wisdom that will shock the business world wisdom that will shock the entrepreneur world Aya. wisdom that will shock men in your career wisdom that will make your degree meaningful wisdom to produce a model family wisdom to live perpetually in hell wisdom to command prosperity cry the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling take it take it take it take it open the heavens oh god open the heavens oh god open the heavens oh god receive a baptism shake a poriata koinonia be baptized with the spirit of wisdom koinonia be baptized with the spirit of wisdom Koinonia, let it fall, let it fall, let business moguls arise from this wisdom, lead us, the true secret of kingdom success, the true secret of undeniable kingdom success. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. See. Listen. Listen to me. I tell you something. Take this wisdom from my life and there is no Joshua Selman again. This is the mystery behind this young man you are seeing. If you can believe this, the day God told me I was not on stage, the day God gave it to me, you were not there. I tell you, students of the school of the spirit, 
i want to release upon you a key tonight i want to release upon you something that will mark your life for if you believe it truly you will receive you can argue it you can sit down there and watch others or you can humble yourself and say lord this is it this is it my spirit tells me this is it lift your hands i want to pray out of the abundance of grace that has been given i want to pray i pray that as i declare may it come upon somebody right now in the name of jesus father you gave me this message this is the secret that scientists have not been able to discover this is the realm that defies the limitation of man's wisdom this is the true secret of kingdom success we started building last week and i want to pray i tell you the heavens are open in the name that is above all names at the count of three i tell you it will hit this building in a very mighty way at the count of three i just like you to shout after the count of three i receive and begin to receive it in your life it will change your life are you ready now one two three lord let it fall take it take it take it take it take it take it shake it receive it a baptism a fire a baptism the fire of wisdom the fire it comes from above let it change your status the wisdom of solomon receive it Receive it. Receive it. Shake it, 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 it. Be marked with wisdom. Be marked with wisdom in business. Be marked with wisdom in your job. Be marked with wisdom. Wisdom to speak. Wisdom to preach. Wisdom to attract wealth. Wisdom to attract honor. Wisdom for health. Take this wisdom and rescue your families. Take this wisdom and change your CGPA. Take this wisdom and change your marital status. Take this wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take this wisdom and end poverty in your life forever. Take this wisdom and stop begging forever. Take this wisdom and be in command. Command in ministry. Command in business. Command in your place of work. Command in your home. You may be the last born, but let this wisdom take you to the front hallelujah hallelujah i pray for you tonight as many of you sleep i declare the experience of solomon let it happen to you in the name of jesus May the angels of wisdom visit you. May the God who gave Solomon wisdom impart you tonight. That business idea you have been praying and fasting for, tonight let it come by wisdom. In your place of meditation, let leadership wisdom come upon you. hallelujah i pray for you the same way the cattle of jacob were spotted so that anywhere you saw them you knew 
that this were Jacob's cattle. I pray for you because you have come for Koinonia tonight. Favor has been our mark in this place. But to that favor, I add wisdom to you. I add wisdom to you. Go ahead and give God thanks. Go ahead. Thank Him. I tell you, something has happened to you this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spend time. Spend time meditating. Stop running around. Where are you going? Say, I'm looking for money. No. Go back to your secret place. May God raise wealthy people here. Amen. You know what to do with money, so God is not afraid of giving you. I pray that one favor connection. Don't say, I am young. That's a curse. I pray to you, receive it. Amen. Ladies, don't say, we are ladies. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen. You are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord what a night that God is releasing wisdom I want to pray for you right now or you have given your heart to the Lord once but you've really found yourself distracting you, are, you have been distracted here and there the author of wisdom is calling you tonight for a fresh start please make sure you do not hear this voice tonight and just take it lightly because God is doing great things if you are not born again you do not have access to this wisdom I don't care even if you fell down it doesn't work that way so to make it right with God or make a first time decision for God please leave your seat and come out here right now right now if there's anybody like that leave your seat and come out here right now and I will pray with you in one minute do we have people like that very quickly I'll give you one minute quickly we're out of time anyone making this glorious decision don't be ashamed appreciate her bless you sister bless you sister bless you my brother I see you coming keep appreciating them bless them bless them bless them God bless you God bless you don't be ashamed you are encountering true wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming out. This is unto the Lord your maker. You will mark this day as a turning point in your life. Lift your hands and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I ask you tonight to be the Lord of my life. I repent of my sins and my old ways I declare that from today I'm saved I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me and grant me this great wisdom from today I am a different person in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father thank you you have brought these ones by your spirit change them let this not just be an emotional experience change them in the name of jesus christ i want to pray for you listen you will never lack wisdom in your life again in the name of jesus christ you are blessed please follow the ushers in one minute they'll have your details and we'll follow you up tomorrow by 5 p.m. at chapel. God bless you. Thank you, sister. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. We'll soon be out of here. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first night here in Koinonia. I'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously. We want to bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Bless you. Bless you, my appreciate them. Bless you. Come on, Koinonia. This is not your best. Bless you bless you thank you 
thank you the lord brought you here to access wisdom the lord brought you here to access wisdom hallelujah keep coming god bless you hallelujah thank you so much we celebrate you thank you for coming the lord brought you here to bless you hallelujah how many of you were blessed today thank you so much do something with what you have received you can be emotional about this teaching and it will never change you but if you do something with it no power in existence can stop it hallelujah we're anointed people and we want to pray for you if we pray for you you are blessed i tell you saints of god stretch your hands as we pray for them may the lord bless you may the lord bless you may the lord bless you we command that you will go back with instant testimonies you will know that god is in this place we bless you with a fresh hunger for god we bless you for depth of we bless you with hunger for deep spiritual things we bless you with wisdom you will go back with a traceable mark of wisdom in your life hallelujah thank you so much want to officially announce the wedding of bishop if you are not jealous appreciate him come on come on koinonia hallelujah hallelujah i tell you wedding bells will be ringing in koinonia from now till december hallelujah there are many more to follow we'll be announcing one by one hallelujah it's on the 19th of october 2013 that's what he told me he said 2013 hallelujah he said he will go to a jimmy's wedding with his wife that's what he said hallelujah now please every bishop is one of us so we're going to be part of it the wedding is in lagos hallelujah not everybody will be able to go but we'll delegate a few people hallelujah but everybody is going to support not this night but you will be part of it hallelujah we will not force you but we are going to be part of it he is part of us now every correspondence and every logistic every support please make sure you we pass that across to our online people too should be communicated through jakes jakes is his chief logistics officer <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord so any anybody who comes to tell you he was delegated by bishop to help and gather any support just shout thief hallelujah any support will officially go through um jakes in the course of the meetings we'll be announcing other weddings that are coming but i want you to stretch your hands and pray for him the bible says your marriage shall be a blessing your children surround your table hallelujah that which we have been calling future is now here and it's in our midst many of you do not know her her name is polam you see her on the wedding day hallelujah she was one of our first ushers in this place she was the one who used to hold everybody who falls down while she was holding god is saying you are doing this for me you are holding people for me some of you are here you won't serve god you won't be serious and you want to marry change as you are stretching your hands say lord change me don't just laugh pray as you are praying say lord you are locating people don't leave me behind change me serve in the house of god be faithful lord we thank you for our brother it's just about a month a month really and a few weeks father we pray for our brother bishop we thank you he has been a great blessing and now lord we thank you because he's he's entering the marital realm and we thank you because it will be bliss thank you father we commit all the organization all the logistics we thank you because every finance for the wedding is provided thank you because you will bless and honor him in the mighty name of jesus christ now celebrate him the way you want to be celebrated <laughs> hallelujah 
say after me in the name of Jesus. Okay. There's an account number here for those who are making any contributions. You will make, oh, you will make, let me tell you the truth. So don't even look at, you will make contribution, serious contribution for Bishop. If you want us during your wedding, don't bring any wedding card for us if you have not been faithful helping this person. And let me tell you something. Please, don't get us involved with any wedding plan that you didn't start with us. Don't go and bring anybody from any forest and say pray for us and then tomorrow they say it's koinonia that endorsed this but say this brother uh -uh. he was a lion that came out of the forest that elisha called make sure you do, don't do some of you are doing relationship as if you are a secret society only you later now you now come and say oh counseling you know all this no no honestly we want to know you are serious and we want to know the brother's head is right both with revelation and insight so these are the details hallelujah please you can get it from jake's gt bank if you please make sure you write seed for bishop's wedding seed whether if it's a check make it payable to jake's and then at the back of it write seed for bishop's wedding don't do any donation by proxy hallelujah don't give somebody that has been trusting God for money. Say, please help me. Ben, say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'll give Bishop after the wedding. <laughs> Hallelujah. I say, Koinonia is rich. Whether we give or not, it doesn't really matter. Oh, God. No, no, no. Don't say that. Hallelujah. So, these are the details. For time's sake, I may not announce it immediately after. Please get. Some of you, this is the time to sow for your own marriage. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I'm serious about this marriage thing and I'm sowing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, after me, I have the wisdom of God. And I command supernatural exploits in the name of Jesus. Uncommon decisions, uncommon wealth, uncommon success, uncommon prosperity, uncommon leadership, uncommon honor, uncommon health. My portion in the name of Jesus. It is my portion in the name of Jesus. I bless you. You will go as an ambassador. You will do exploits for the kingdom. You will heal the sick. You will cast out devils. You will bring great solutions to many. Because you are marked by the wisdom of God. In the name of Jesus. After we share the grace, I'd like you to hug 20 people. And tell them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just bless his name. His presence is in this place. Lord, we bless you. We worship you. For ye are come unto Mount Zion, city of the Lord, innumerable company of angels, spirits of just men. Stan was speaking, he was encouraging us. You can know about someone when you read his books, when you study about him, but you know the person when you encounter him. Hallelujah. There is a difference between knowing the word and knowing the author. Hallelujah. How many of you truly desire to know the Lord? I will lift my voice and I will sing. I will sing holy. Will you help me sing holy? Yeah, yeah. To my Lord and Savior, my God and King. I will sing holy. Holy, I will praise the Lamb of God to sing upon the throne. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who rises and lives and lives to come, 
presence of God is strong in this place. All the angels bow. They bow down. And they cry. Come on, join the elders. Yes, they cry. We are sons and daughters. We praise you now. And we cry. Yeah. 
Lord, we declare your greatness before the nations. Lord, you are great. Who is man that you are mindful of him? Nor the son of man that thou visitest him. You have made him a little lower than Elohim. Crowning him with greatness. Yes, we declare that you are great. The power of God is strong in this place, I tell you. The power of God is strong in this place. God in the midst of his people is mighty. <laughs> God, with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your strength. There is something about the presence of God. Listen to me. When you approach God with a sincere heart, when you approach God with a broken and a contrite heart, your brokenness invites His presence. John 14 21 says, He that obeys my commands is he that loves me. He says, And he that loves me, I will love him also, and my Father will love him, and we will come and manifest, reveal ourselves to him. There are a kind of people that invites the presence of God. They are not religious people. They are not those who come to church just trying to watch, just trying to be Christians. There is a realm of intimacy with God where you press beyond religion. You press beyond your denomination. I don't care what it is. You press beyond the experience of your parents. That's what we seek to do in Koinonia. That we bring everyone to a point where we reveal to you the reality of Jesus Christ. That is not just a religious fiction that was put in a book called the Bible. For he desires to meet with those who will truly worship him. That's why we pray. That's why he blesses us with his presence. Let me tell you something about the presence of God. When the presence of God shows up in a place, no matter how hardened you are, you cannot deny. Because configured in your spirit man is the ability to appreciate and respect his presence. This is what breaks a man. So you come in with all your pride and your hardness. And whilst you stand there, you experience the presence of one that your spirit cannot resist. Without the presence of God, what we call preaching is just nonsense on stage. For it is that presence. It is because of the glorious presence. See, that's why the psalmist said, Cast me not from your presence. He said, Do not take your spirit away from me. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper a gatekeeper in the house of God that I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord hallelujah you must develop an attitude to stop managing God it's not one of the many things is your in your life are you listening to me I'm telling you this God is not one of the many things that deserve your life how could you classify him in the same category with many things when he stands in a class of his own for you are my everything my destiny you are my everything my confess it before him you are my everything, my destiny. You are my everything, my destiny. And you sing, I love you. I love you. I need you, Lord. Sing, I love you. Lord, tonight give us an experience give us an encounter hallelujah hallelujah god bless you please be seated you're welcome
Bible says in the days of his power people shall be willing thank you Jesus Acts chapter 19 Hallelujah. Tonight you will not leave this place the same, I assure you. God will give you an encounter beyond what you imagine. For those of you who came for post-UME, God has a rude shock for you tonight. He will leave a view with a gift that you met the King. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name, Most High, I'm truly yielding to your Spirit. And I'm walking in your love. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore your holy name. Let me sing the song just one more time. Please breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name, Most High, I am yielding to your Spirit. I'm walking in your love. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore your holy name. So take my heart and mold it. I give you my heart. Transform me. Take my will. Conform it to yours. To yours. This is my prayer. I'm not preaching to you yet. Take my heart. That's my desire, Lord. Whoa, whoa. Take my mind. Would you take my mind? Transform me. Take my will. Take my will. Conform me to yours. To yours. Let my life. Be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell Lord I'm singing this to you let my life be the temple of your spirit let my spirit feel the world of your embrace let me be a holy habitation 
where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. This is my prayer, Lord. you Lord you are the power at work in me yeah. you're my life you're my breath you're my own blessings of your presence thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit my friend my teacher my advocate my strengthener stand by the one who turns every wilderness into a fruitful vine and every fruitful vine into a forest Lord, I thank you. It's all about you. Jesus. And all this is for you. Truly. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. See if you should do things my way. You alone are God, and I surrender. Lord, we are standing before your presence. We have come to meet He that is able to change. Father, there are sick bodies in this place. There are oppressed people. Joshua Selman cannot help them. Lord, let the people know I'm not the healer. Let the people know I'm not the deliverer. Let the people know there is nothing I have that did not come from you. That I'm a product of your mercy and your grace. And that you desire to bring everyone into this realm of intimacy the glory of your presence let it fill this place let the glory of your presence fill this place let the glory of your presence fill this place. Mantle your people with your presence, O oh God. Mantle your people. Let there be a holy convocation. My Father, my Father, Abba Father, my Father, I dare to call you my Father, my Maker, my Father. I hide behind the cross. Let the people see Jesus. Blessed be Hosanna. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mighty. Holy. I adore you. Lord, let the people feel the peace of my passion for you. Sena Maria, na 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 mo shata bala na 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 na. Sena Maria, na shata na masia na 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 na. Sena masia. the Spirit of God I desire to draw men into my presence come approach my glory say the Spirit of God I lead you into my glory say the Spirit of God I lead you into my glory say the Spirit of God into the beauty of holiness where I crown you with splendor and joy That is where I replace your heaviness. Just worship him in one minute. Let's let the whole Hallelujah. 
The glory of God tests your seriousness. Because every time the glory of God shows up, your flesh begins to react. That part that will not bend to His glory. In His presence, He will be refined. I tell you the truth the secret of grace when you touch him the world will know that you touched him there's no guessing it there's no pretending it hallelujah God who sits in the heavens glory to your name verse 11 and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body James, who is James? James, James, who is that? Can I see your hands? Come quick. You are awesome in this place. There are healings going on. God is healing people right about now. You feel the heat of the Spirit going through your body. It's the healing anointing. You are awesome.
listening to me. Pray that God will help you. And don't be rude to any lecturer. Are you listening to me? Does this make sense what I'm telling you? Don't be rude to any lecturer. You'll be frustrated for nothing. The Lord bless you. Acts chapter 19. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Listen to me. It's God's desire that we become living tabernacles of his presence. Are you listening to me? That we become vessels of glory. The Bible says there is this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of power might be of God and not of us. It's God's desire that we come to a point where our bodies can host his glory. Where we can host his power. Where we can host his anointing. Are you listening to me? The Bible says that Paul was so full of God. He said handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. Handkerchiefs and aprons taken from the body of Paul. And the Bible makes us to realize that these handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul and it was used. And devils cried out. Sick people got healed. There is a realm of glory and anointing and power hear me that god wants us to step into beyond nominal christianity listen to me we live in a wicked world are you listening to me the lord has been showing me visions of the kind of demonic and satanic things that hell is releasing against god's people oppression sickness and now we we have let me tell you something and i want to warn you listen i believe in the word of god but can i tell you something christianity without power will frustrate you are you listening to me that you become full of god's glory full of god the bible says in that day it says the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and what the yoke from off your neck and he says shall be destroyed because of the anointing in our bid to put balance between the word and anointing people have given all kinds of excuses for not pressing into god and we have trivialized the anointing of the holy spirit to a point that many people just say look forget about it there's all these people manifestation all the time let's sit down and receive the word what is your definition of the word because in the days of the apostles they did not have what you call the bible so what was their word of god are you listening to me a powerless christianity will end you in frustration i get i get messages and i meet people almost daily and i tell you the kind of oppression that satan is bringing the hostility that is coming from the pit of hell does not require just the kind of christianity where you say john 3 16 all things are mine uh -uh. are you listening to me handkerchiefs the bible says an apron paul was so full of the holy ghost the power the anointing, the potency of the spirit was in him. The Bible says to a point that people were waiting for him to step out. Peter was so full of the divine life of God that when he stepped out, his shadow, his shadow. Hallelujah. Jesus said something in Isaiah. In fact, Luke 18. Let's read the account in Luke chapter 4, sorry. From verse 17. The Bible says 
that he went into the temple as his custom was and there was given to him the book that was written by prophet Isaiah. and then he opened it and there he declared the spirit of the lord is upon me because he that spirit has anointed me smeared me anointed me and because of the anointing that i carry he said i will set the captives free declare liberty to the poor it's amazing how we try to do god's work without his anointing the anointing of god's spirit is his empowerment is the energizing that the spirit of god brings in us hallelujah no king was ever allowed to function in ancient time until he was anointed when the holy spirit comes into your life listen to me one of the things that he does is not just to enlighten you and cause the word of god to come alive in your spirit the holy ghost empowers you hallelujah he causes his anointing to be alive and to be at work in your spirit the holy spirit causes you to come into the place of his ability and his power causes you to begin to walk in the glory of god the bible says and stephen full of the holy ghost it took the holy ghost for stephen to have just been stoned and he did not he was not angry it takes listen listen to me it takes the spirit for you to do some things you want to do are you listening to me it takes the holy ghost to love for the love of god has been shed abroad in our heart by the holy ghost it takes the holy ghost to heal the sick to set the captives free if our christianity is true then we must be like jesus and the bible says in acts chapter 10 verse 38 peter speaking he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power the jesus we are trying to become like the bible says he went about doing good on account of that anointing and the ability of the spirit and healing all they that were oppressed for god was with him hallelujah are you not tired of sympathizing with the many oppressed people around you are you listening to me how many oppressed people do you see around you every day and every time listen to me every time i see oppression i take responsibility for it because i know that god is not limited there is a level of glory and grace that we must step into and when we step into that level of glory and grace you will be able to host a greater weight of his presence are you listening to me a greater weight of his anointing a greater weight of his power and out of the overflow of that reality you will step in and begin to do the works of jesus He said, if you say you are the children of Abraham, then do the works of Abraham. That means if you say you are the children of God, do the works of God. Handkerchiefs and aprons. In John chapter 7, Jesus speaking from verse 34. It was on the last day of the feast and Jesus said, if any man thirst, he said, let him come unto me. If any man thirst, let him come. He said, and that he will drink and that out of his belly shall flow what rivers rivers the revelation of that river is given in ezekiel chapter 47 when the bible begins to talk about the river that came from the east side of the temple and the bible says that he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my knees and then he measured a thousand cubits and then it was to um you know my my ankles he measured a thousand cubits it was to the loins he measured a thousand cubits he said and it was a river that i could not pass through he said wherever that river went the fish that was dead would come alive it's a life-giving river in fact the bible says there is a stream he said there is a river whose stream makes glad the city of god there is a river the river of healing the river of blessing the river of power the river of deliverance and
and God desires that we step into that realm where we can be useful for the king many of us listen to me we must step up many of us have been good counselors enough it's time for us to be miracle workers are you listening to me we have done enough of counseling enough of saying wow one day in the sweet by and by now it's time to be miracle workers doing the works of jesus christ there are many of you that if you will increase capacity you will end the captivity in your family you know what i'm talking about the thief cometh not john 10 10 but to steal to kill and to destroy satan has left his mark upon many lives and many families i was sharing i think it was during the minister's meeting i was saying that how that the lord showed me i saw an unusual release of the spirit of cancer cancer sent to different families breast cancer lung cancer cancer of the four ladies cancer of, i saw these things and it amazed me and let me tell you something if your christianity is just enough to say wow lord i thank you there will come a time when it will be as if the bible lied about the victory of jesus how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power in fact the bible says that when i came to you paul speaking he said i did not come with the excellency of speech the world has had enough of our noise he said but in the demonstration of power that your faith will not be grounded on the wisdom of man but on the power of god there are so many situations that happen to believers and we are so helpless about it and as helpless as we are god is also sad because that's not the limit there is more that he can do through us but we must build greater capacity for his glory when we sing the song what manner of man is jesus hallelujah he sings back and says what manner of man are you that you will not yield to me to see the fullness of me what manner Paul walked in a realm. See, listen, these guys walked in a realm that they called them gods. He said, the gods are come down to us. They said Paul was Zeus. And then his colleague Hermes. These were ancient gods. Men who lived like spirits upon the surface of the earth. This has nothing to do with ministry. It is the blueprint for safety for the times we are coming. You must be full of God. The anointing will be broken only to the degree I, I, I think we, we were watching a program this evening and uh, we're watching something it was a deliverance that was happening to someone and then I was watching and when the person got delivered the demon entered another demon entered back into the person again hallelujah when you are full of the presence of God I assure you no demon see the Bible says if you read niv and other versions they said the burden will be lifted because of the fatness of your neck that the anointing will increase you to a point spiritually peter tan one great man of god was caught up in the spirit some years ago and he saw the state of his spirit man the body was flourishing eating every kind of thing and when he saw his spirit the spirit his spirit man was as thin as a broom almost dying and god told him this is how you are spiritually we have many men of God flourishing physically but carrying no power that's the reason why people criticize miracles and criticize the manifestation of the spirit and everything they say said look just stay stay with the word I believe in the word of God there are many people that come for miracle service and hold their Bibles in their hands and at the end of it you find them outside and demons are crying out of them it is the ministry of the word of God in conjunction with the operation of his spirit that will bring men into liberty that will bring men into truth are you not tired of the Christianity you see around I'm asking you a question don't you ask questions that either God told us a lie in the Bible or there is something we are not getting and let me tell you something 
I blame the leaders, including myself. The reason is because the degree to which we press in the spirit is the degree to which we give others opportunity to come in. When we become complacent with where we are and a few falling down here and there, there is a higher realm beyond just falling up and down where a man becomes full of the life and the power and the glory of the spirit. Listen, the Bible says Stephen just lifted his eyes and there the heavens was opened to him. Can you imagine such a realm? Hallelujah. A man met me for counseling and he shared a story that broke me. This is what he said. He said he went to a particular ministry having a challenge, him and his wife. And after they, after they prayed, you know, prayed, did everything for him, he was desperate. Listen, he was really desperate and his wife was dying. And when it looked like nothing was working, guess what he did? You will guess right. He went to a, you know, all kinds of things and, and did all kinds of conjunctions. And now, when, when people hear this, we do like this. Don't do that until you can prove a solution. Let me tell you something. We have no right to criticize any fake person until we can do the real thing. Are you listening to me? Is, um, do you know how many people, how many of your parents, how many of your brothers, how many of your loved ones that run to native doctors every day? They come to church on Sunday. You know what I'm saying. And you know I'm not telling a lie. Let me tell you, we live in a world that has a real need. Are you listening to me? A real need. A real need. And it takes the anointing of the Spirit. Jesus walked upon the earth. And the moment he stepped into the scene, he was a breath of fresh air. Because the, the scribes and the Pharisees could not help. Lord, I pray that we will not be scribes and Pharisees in our generation. That our Christianity will be an authentic Christianity that will be able to meet the needs of people and do the works of Jesus Christ. We must be dissatisfied with a few miracles here and there. If there are 150 people who are sick and three people get healed, we should be ashamed and go back and cry. Not rejoice. And carry titles and say, Man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Am I challenging you? Because when you challenge yourself and you begin to press into the Spirit, then you open up yourself for more of His presence. When I began to study about God's generals, let me tell you something. I tell you sincerely, the generals that lived, I mean, before most of these people they did not have the opportunity for their life to be recorded those guys walk like spirits on the earth you need to study about them and you'll be ashamed of the things we are doing number one they had no worship team that steers the atmosphere right now we live in a realm where you must steer the atmosphere as if the holy spirit has become a generator so you say okay let's whine let's go let's go let's go let's go now the power is moving those guys moved in a realm of grace a realm of power their miracles were real miracles are you listening to me i heard of a particular man who they came and someone's i mean there was a there was a wound this big the whole family had done everything and he held it and closed it jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever what is your degree of hunger? Handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. Do you know something? I told myself one day, if I have the opportunity to preach in a pastor's conference, I will do something. I will carry one person on wheelchair, one blind person, one amputee, and I'll tell them, follow me for the ministration. I will line three of them here and say, anybody that cannot heal these three, sit quietly and let's press. Now, we can laugh and feel nice, 
But the native doctors are corrupting people. They are corrupting our families. All kinds of things are happening. There are people who are dying. Satan's kingdom is advancing. I, I, I was watching a, a program again this evening and someone was saying how that he was in the occult and he said he single-handedly won more than one million souls. Single-handedly. I said, God, with our media, we rejoice and say blue roof is full and we should be ashamed of ourselves. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. When there is a dissatisfaction in you, you are ready to press further. Tonight I brought you to tell you that the realm that we are in the spirit, there is a higher realm. There are many of you who are sick here. You have been sick for long. Your families are sick. Is that true? You have prayed for them. Nothing happened. What are you doing about it? Nineteen pinching you from inside or are you just complacent for our fathers of old pressed into God Jacob held him and said I will not let you go I will not let you go I will not let you go that a time will come your guitar Steve strings will be more than what it is today that as you stand before the nations and strike one chord one chord it will reverberate the hearts of men. We live in a generation with many Christians and nobody can tell us a very concise plan of God concerning Boko Haram. We have men, we have men of God, all kinds of men, prophets, apostles. We should be ashamed of all these our titles. When Naaman sent, Naaman was sent with a letter to the king Israel and he went and he gave him the king was afraid Elisha said why are you afraid call that man to come and let him know there is a prophet in Israel I don't know how many of us can make that kind of statement yes we have celebrated HIV tuberculosis cancers we have seen the grace of God but it's nothing compared to what God wants can I tell you something? Listen. If this is my ministry inside this room, I tell you if I can solve your problem, the whole world will come and join the queue. Are you listening to me? Even if they will reach just, they will be patient. Do you know how little the solution of mankind is? Many people are not pressing into God. It takes sacrifice, friends, to get to that realm. It takes sacrifice. That's why many people are not pressing. That's why the few that press, when they get there, they are the only ones and pride kills them. Because the sacrifice is too great. When they get there, there is nobody in their class. Are you following me now? One of the greatest men that I respect, Prophet Kobus, who has stepped into a level of the miraculous that I'm satisfied with. In one service, they brought out about 200 people on wheelchairs and crutches. Now that's, that's the work of the kingdom. The day everybody enters here and we prophesy to you and we say in the name of Jesus, receive a miracle in your family and instantly you receive a phone call from your father. Even you will know that something different has happened. I assure you, next week, Koinonia, by four, you will be here. All your loved ones will live wherever they are. Do you know the rat race of man is to look for solution? I assure you, if they find the real solution, they will come. How many barren people move among us all the time? We pray and feel like men of God. Ah, tonight I'm here to challenge you. In your room. In your room. You can preach 100 sermons. If you raise one person from wheelchair here, you will do publicity without a poster. And many people will come, even if you come and complain, they will just say, let's this. Embedded in the heart of every man is the need for every real solution. And let me tell you the truth. 
the fact that many people are skeptical about us means that there is we are not yet providing that degree of the god life because people will look jesus was an awesome wonder let me ask you a question please let me ask you a question please come Aaron. sweetheart please come you're a student here you're in demonstration all right listen to me if jesus were to appear to you right now let's assume i am jesus and he says what do you want me to do for you what will you say you will run and carry your list that means the that means you have problems you are just laughing the truth is you are not confident of the solution that is being that's why you are quietly hiding it and say let's manage what is there if if jesus christ if we are truly his representatives are you listening to me how many of you can step in to a meeting and be sure that you'll be healed be sure that you'll be changed that when they say in the name of jesus you are blessed you are sure that that word will come to pass Are you listening to me? That this lady is here. If I am Jesus Christ, what, what, what class are you? JS3. You are going to write JSC. You are finished. Now, if I am Jesus Christ and I come to you and I say, sweetheart, your JSC is A, will you doubt me? Why? Because I am Jesus Christ. Is that not true? Now we say, as he is in heaven. Listen. Listen listen we say as he is in heaven so are we in this life but how come if i tell you be blessed the truth is you are not seeing all of the blessings in your life you are just afraid to tell me the truth are you listening to me we gather people and claim to get them filled with the holy spirit struggle over them struggle over them turn their head up and down and then carry our frustration and go away and the people are irritated they know there is no power there hallelujah it's amazing that in the midst of this lapse we have men of god who make such boasts they say the man of do you know i get very ashamed Every time they say, now let's introduce the man of God, Apostle. And before they start, people are shouting. I'm saying, okay, Apostle Josh, Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, Apostle this. Do we match? So when people are saying, Kai, look at the demonstration of the power. Look at this. Uh -uh. I'm telling myself, I will not let anybody lie to me. I know the standard the world is in a big need we are celebrating ourselves like this because we have not been exposed go to the village and see the preparation that demons are doing you know we are joking you know all this falling down doesn't impress them it's just us that are hyping here you go to the village and see a man divide a pot into two and pour water and you are seeing the other side and the water is boiling come on now even you when you see that kind of thing you will look at that man i'm stirring up a real christianity of power and the truth is when he finishes when your father cannot afford your school fees after going to the man of god and praying and sowing seed prophets offering apostles offering every kind of offering it doesn't work i assure you your father is going to the village except the problem is not too much how many sick people leave Shika? Straight, they pass our churches and go to the villages. Some of your parents, have they not done it? We all came to Shika and prayed for them. Gathered around like men of God and made our boast and our noise. And nothing happened. And while they just look, they say, thank you, man of God. In their heart, they already know there's no hope. And somebody calls them and says, sorry, um, we, we, there, is, there is one Baba. And now you can sit down and easily say, how can a man go to a Baba? You are not yet desperate for solution. A woman who has been around 10 years, 12 years, no children. Any suggestion will make sense at that point. Are you listening to me? You are here struggling and we cannot even prophesy and say you will graduate in spite of your courses. I tell you, go to a native doctor in Zaria and see if you will not do something that will change your result and you will graduate. Are you listening to me? 
a lady who is shouting and saying no marriage no marriage and we're here saying okay let's manage the situation what is the psychological implication when you were 12 what happened look at that nonsense and you get to a native doctor as soon as you are entering he tells you born on the um 16th of august your name is grace come and sit down there's a seat i've prepared for you here and this pot is boiling i know you like steven so what else tell me and say, baba is true and you see some of our parents as dignified as they are see how they become children in the presence of devils because they are desperate for solution they can come and sit here in church and we'll give them nice seats but the native doctor say enter with your back and they're entering because they are desperate Go ahead, Sana. and the man stands he said now sit down he said if you turn back and you see your father and your mother your dignified people there is a man of god standing and we fold our arms and say you know uh the lord appeared to me don't lie to us don't tell us lies again because we need to be seeing the fruit of that appearance stop telling us lies that you saw jesus and you saw angels because those who saw Jesus and saw angels in the Bible, we know what happened to them. Let me tell you, the presence of one angel killed 150,000 people. Those who chorus and sing angels every minute, every second. Come on. Am I challenging you tonight? I'm shaking off things that... The Bible says that David played his heart. And something happened to Saul. A spirit left Saul. How many demons and principalities and powers lead the praises and worship in our church? Unaffected by the power of worship. Thank God for the excellence. Thank God for the backdrops. Thank God for everything. Am I challenging you? What is your concept of Christianity? It says, out of him will flow rivers. Rivers. What you see today that you call a blessing and the power of God, do you know it's just one step out of the cave compared to where God wants to take us to? We insult people and said they have gone to do all kinds of diabolical things. So why don't you help them? Satan does not create anything. He only perverts. Can we have a voice that will give us authentic biblical Christianity? Do we have men like that? That you can come to me with no job and you're already smiling when you see me because you are sure that you are going back with a job. Receive, receive, receive. And we're sweating and the protocol runs with a handkerchief. So you are joking nonsense i'm not ashamed to say it we should be ashamed of ourselves we're getting frustrated with all of these things we do and we sugarcoat our christianity you know what god is angry let me tell you god is not happy about it oh god give me members let koinonia come and fool and we stand and we look at the many people but there are people with needs real needs And it's amazing there are many ministers who are complacent you just sit down on sunday share one but i don't care whether you are quoting scriptures from genesis to revelation if it's not helping people to become like christ and really meeting their needs and breaking if your gospel is true satan should react to it i don't mean reaction satan should oppress you the people should be free it says and ye shall know the truth how come we teach we have sessions and sessions of weeks of teaching and i tell you demons attend all the sessions and only certain lower demons just manifest and we stand as men of god we are nodding but you know the real people who have demons you can't go and meet them because you know the demons won't go out you know the real people there are people troubling our fathers and our mothers we know that if we had if i gave you power right now that everyone, every demon you shouted on will go. Some of you will enter bus this night and say, Uncle Sam is leaving my house once and for all. Why are you unable to go? Hallelujah. 
a minister finishes ministering and when he finishes he says pray for me i'm expecting a comeback from satan what the heck are we saying jesus casted out the legions of demons and slept sound the only reason why they caught him was because he gave himself they took him to a cliff and he just walked through there and he said as the father has sent me so send i as the father has sent me so send i you that you can stand and look at your sisters and say the error of barrenness the error of waiting dying at 24 dying at 25 is over this is not the issue of man of god you are coming with an anointing full of the holy ghost this is what i cried and i told god i said lord if you are not going to take me to this level of christianity let me stop ministry I'm fooling myself. Thank God for all the things that have happened. Thank God for the supernatural supplies and the grace of God. But there is more. There is more. We admire men who have stepped into that dimension. Or a bit of it. And then we pray all the time and say the Lord is going to send a revival. How will it come? Is it not going to come through us? Listen, there is a price. But I want you to know that God wants us to pay that price. To enter into that level. Are you listening to me? Because Satan is not sleeping about your case. Satan is nervous about your manifestation. And he's not going to rest. And if all we will get up and do is just ba 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 ba. Thank you Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And demons are watching and say, I wonder how demons look at us. They say, what in the world is going on here? And we shall Jesus looked at a raging storm he lifted his hands and said shalom be still talk about authority what manner of man we struggle for hours with demons he looked at the money the demons were begging him I've never seen a service where we come to and all the demons come to the front and say please ministers before time for salmon, we know we are going out. Can you send us to Shika instead of Jiwa? That's what they did to Jesus. The demons made advances and said, let's negotiate. We are sure we are going to leave. Nothing will make us stay, but please, just send us to the peaks. And Jesus said, go, go, go. Right now, what we glory in, what we glory in is to call a lady out and then once she's shaking, you just want to prove look let me tell you we are doing things to cover for our laziness and lack of hunger you just find one yielded lady who is moving and like now i'll just touch you with one finger what the heck is that there are real sick people if you are really a miracle worker do it thank god for the growing of small small legs but what of the one who doesn't have anything can they come for miracle services too are they invited are they invited or are there some do you know listen listen do you know what it means when blind people lame people crippled people sit down and come to our services and we're shouting what manner of man is jesus then when we get to the place we made and immediately they say he made the blind to walk you see entourage and the man of god is stepping in now the man of faith and power he comes to sit down waste people's time makes all kinds of noise throws a few people on the ground one migraine here one cancer one wheelchair and the ass is going out we all boast and clap shame on us you should get up and come there is a higher realm three men shook cities how many men of god do we have in zaria and in nigeria and yet evil is just thriving as if there are no men of god when paul entered the city demons responded from the headquarters and ran and the three two men paul alone covered asia minor no flight no nothing full of the holy ghost charles g finney these were men that stepped a bit into that realm listen to what charles g finney would do this is what he would do round the city he's walking around while he finishes praying guess what he will do he will just walk out of the city 
suddenly men will start falling down from everywhere people are just preparing in their factory the power of god hits the people if we have that kind of thing happening in our generation the man who built it joshua selman and will say now come and sow 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 everything so let me tell you something the day god will judge the people who are sowing all the time we, are, we, we just let them package your seed and sow into this anointing what anointing is because the people are so desperate so the little that is there they pour themselves to it but there is a god that sits in heaven and he desires for us to step in to a higher realm i'm going to pray god will visit you tonight but i don't know what is your definition of christianity there is a dying world out there enough of charity we need miracle workers are you listening to me we need miracle workers a viper beats the hand of paul and paul just looked at it and shook it shook it shook it lord take us to these realms where did you take alexander the way to lord where did you take william branham to take us to that realm take us to that realm take us to that realm. where you will move in a level of glory and grace level of power and victory otherwise there is serious mourning that will come to the body because satan will eat up everything he can eat up do you know something the more you are being challenged and the more we men of god keep lying to you and not causing you to press and we ourselves will not press let me tell you the danger the danger is that satan will have a free right and a day will come frustration will come upon the body of christ want to be one of the celebrity men of God who is wasting people's time and wasting God's time I want to be a serious person I told God that anywhere they invite me for a meeting I'm going there for serious business I assure you if we step into this realm of power you will know that you are a blessing to the world now your English notwithstanding all these rubbish things we put as excuses in ministry Say your lingua franca. Right now we live in a digital age. Let me tell you. If koinonia has just marks. If you are getting the kind of result that will scare you. you how did we used to meet before? Remember? We are meeting where? On the floor. And we have many men of God. You put balloon. You put this. The, the, P, the PA has his own cap. This guy has his own cap. Whether we wear bandana. Whether we wear cap whether we wear green white green whether we wear football jerseys nothing will replace the absence of fire nothing see the reason why ministries compete they are only covering for lack of fire i assure you no man who has real fire has time for competition hallelujah I want to be that kind of person i know people who accept god helps them their situation is hopeless i went to shika one time i prayed for a lady i tell you i i felt how powerless my prayer was i hope i'm helping you tonight i'm the apostle josh you call but i'm telling you this there is a higher realm and we can either pretend it and continue doing ministry or repent from ministry and step into a life of glory that's what i want you to encounter i've repented for ministry since i've repented from it there is a higher realm there are many of you that cry in your hostels and you come and just sit down and say lord would you touch me and we are here laughing tell your neighbor uh -huh, uh -huh. how does that bring healing please sit down sir. Satan will keep being attractive until the day the sons of life come out. If I spit on you 
and your family receives a breakthrough i assure you you carry container and come and say josh where is that anointed saliva as 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 smelly as it is you will say no matter how fine you are this is how desperate people are for a miracle Let it rain, let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, Father let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain the rain of new levels let it rain open open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let the church arise let the pride you died for Every one of you listen to me do not think this teaching tonight is for men of God I assure you you will deceive yourself the teaching tonight is not for men of God the teaching tonight is for a generation that is desperate enough that we are saying we are tired of this worshipers are you ready to enter the next level of grace full of the Holy Ghost out of your belly out of your words out of this mic let it flow rivers rivers of healing rivers of blessings rivers of power rivers of grace let the sick be truly healed let the oppressed be truly delivered set a new standard rise beyond nominal christianity rise beyond average yes you're a man of god but there is more yes you're a woman of god but there is more rise up on your feet everybody let's travel for a few minutes, let it rain. Open the floodgates of There is more. I am tired of this level. Tired of this level. There is more. I can be a better blessing. I can be a better blessing. Reka tempo ko so pregere kibo. So pregere kibo. A generation of power, a generation of miracles, signs, wonders, living careers of the glory, yield that to the spirit, yield that to the spirit, yield that to the spirit that will confront the gates of hell, confront the gates of hell. The church, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell.
greater glory, greater anointing, more of his presence, more of his presence. There are powers that need to bow. There are situations that need to bow. There are levels we need to step into. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.